Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about bladder cancer. Being a smoker puts you at risk of for a variety of illnesses and malignancies including bladder cancer. If you see blood in your urine, even if it comes and goes, this might be an indication of a urinary system problem, in worst scenario, signs of bladder cancer, which is what we shall discuss. The bladder is a hollow organ located in the lower pelvic region. It has flexible muscular walls that may stretch to store urine and squeeze to release it. After watching this video, you will know everything about bladder cancer, including its symptoms, how it is identified, and the treatments available, as well as its survival rate. Our role today is to answer most of your questions regarding bladder cancer. Today we have Dr. Sun, who is a leading doctor at Bundang Chasik Hospital. He is going to discuss with us everything about bladder cancer from an experienced medical point of view. Hi Ume, before we start, please subscribe to our channel so the next time you'll be updated with our new releases. Hi, Dr. Son. Hello. Very nice to meet you. Yeah. Can you present yourself to our viewers? Hello. I'm Dr. Young Wan Sun, urologist working at Bundang Jaising Hospital. It is very nice to meet you. They will be talking about bladder cancer. Yes. What is bladder cancer? Bladder cancer refers to a malignant tumor that has formed in the bladder. Bladder cancers can be differentiated into various types according to the cell type, for example, squamous cell carcinomas, sarcomas, and lymphomas. However, when we say bladder cancer, we usually refer to cancer that has originated from the epithelial cells of the bladder. So what are the first signs of bladder cancer? The most common complaint that patients notice once they have bladder cancer is that their urine becomes red. Hematuria is a term for it. It is the most common reason to visit the hospital other than the gross hematuria that the patient can see. There are instances when the patient takes a test as part of their checkup and hear that they have red blood cells in their urine. This microscopic hematuria is also a common cause for hospital visits. And then there are patients who complain of frequent urination, urgency, pain upon urination, or other similar symptoms that lead to bladder cancer diagnosis. The disease has mostly progressed in such cases, all things considered. I would advise patients to pay attention to their urine to see if they do have bloody urine. Uh, so what are some of the examinations needed for diagnosis of bladder cancer? The most important exam in diagnosing bladder cancer is a cystoscremy. When bladder cancer is suspected, cystoscremy has to be performed to confirm the presence of a tumor inside the bladder, and once it has been discovered, we check how far the tumor has expanded beyond the bladder and if there are any local regional lymph node invasion. And also, if there are any associated abnormalities in the upper urinary tract, which includes the ureter and kidneys. This is done using an abdominal CT scan. What are the stages of bladder cancer? The stages of bladder cancer, as with all cancers, are divided into 1, 2, 3, and 4. With bladder cancer, an important aspect in its staging is whether it is a superficial bladder cancer or an invasive bladder cancer. This is a decisive factor in choosing a treatment option if we look at the anatomy of the bladder. There are several layers. We refer to bladder cancer that is formed in the epithelial mucose layer as TA and carcinoma in situ, where the cancer cells are widespread within the epithelial mucose layer called T1. T1 refers to cancer that has invaded the lamnia propria but hasn't yet invaded the muscle layer, and T2 refers to the muscle invasive cancer. It is important to distinguish between T1 and T2 which is the margin between superficial and invasive because the treatment changes according to this difference. So, talking about treatments, what are some of the operations for bladder cancer? As I mentioned, it is important to distinguish between superficial and invasive treatment choices. In other words, between T1 and T2, since they speak for different surgical indications, once bladder cancer is diagnosed, the first step that follows is endoscopic resection of the tumor. We resect the visible mass and at the same time, it is paramount that we determine just how deep the tumor has invaded. We check the pathology report 
to see if it is indeed superficial or invasive. And if it turns out to be invasive, we perform a total cystectomy with cystostomy. So the operation becomes quite complicated. So other than surgeries, what are some treatments used for bladder cancer? In bladder cancer, other than surgery, we can use intracystic injection, chemotherapy, and immunotherapy, or general medication used for other cancers. But one thing to note is that in bladder cancer, there is rarely a scenario where only medication is used without surgery. Unless the patient is of very old age or has numerous comorbidities, which do not allow him or her to have an operation. We perform all this non-surgical treatment, such as intracystic injection, chemotherapy, immunotherapy together with surgery to the mass in the bladder. So, after the surgery, a patient, how often should he get a checkup? The two most important exams in follow-up after bladder surgery is cystoscopy and abdominal CT scans. These two exams, although it may vary according to the severity of each patient's condition, cystoscopy is performed every three to six months, and abdominal CT scans are taken every six months, one year for follow-up. Uh, what is the likelihood of recurrence of bladder cancer? Bladder cancer reoccurs frequently. As I mentioned, the reoccurrence rate also differs depending on whether it is superficial or invasive. In superficial bladder cancer, which takes up about 70% of bladder cancer, has a relatively good prognosis, is more easily treatable, and is less dangerous in comparison to invasive cancer. However, it is more likely to reoccur in other parts of the bladder after treatment. The reoccurrence rate is about 60 to 70 percent. In the case of invasive cancer, once it is diagnosed, the standard treatment is curative total cystectomy with cystostomy. The disease-free five-year survival rate in invasive bladder cancer is also 60 to 70 percent. So I can safely assume that about 30 percent reoccurs in invasive bladder cancer after surgery. Is heredity an important factor in bladder cancer? As with other cancers, cancer is a result of both genetic factors and environmental factors. A unique characteristic of bladder cancer is that even if the parents have bladder cancer history, it does not raise the chance of the child to have bladder cancer. So how many people or how, what is the percentage of people who get bladder cancer every year and how many of them get cured? I am unfamiliar with the most recent incident statistics, but I can tell you, according to the 2002 cancer statistics, bladder cancer is the number nine cancer worldwide. Meaning, of the people who have passed away due to cancer, bladder cancer accounted as the ninth common cause. And in the U.S., the incidence was 37 male patients and nine female patients occurred in every 10,000. I recall it as the fourth most common cancer in the U.S. In Korea, it was the ninth most common cancer in the year 2002, and the incidence was 7 to 8 per 10,000 individuals. That was 2002, and I believe the number has increased by now. Mm, so after a bladder cancer surgery, what kind of lifestyle changes should be done? And for smoking and alcohol, does it also affect uh, the reoccurrence of uh, bladder cancer? And also, how can we prevent this kind of cancer? If I am asked to choose one factor that is most important, related to prevention, treatment and reoccurrence in bladder cancer, I tell my patients it is smoking. You have to let go of smoking, period. Smokers have a prevalence that is four to 10 times higher than non-smokers. So assume that if you smoke, you have a four to 10 times higher chance of getting bladder cancer. Smoking is an absolute no-go. Other than smoking, exposure to various chemicals have also been proven as a known risk factor. If I look at my patients, it's a bit different these days due to the change in industrial structure. But I recall that workers in chemical dye, chemical drug manufacturing facilities, tend to have a higher prevalence of bladder cancer. So I advise those who have occupational exposure to chemicals should be checked every year for bladder cancer 
and regarding food that helps prevent bladder cancer. I advise drinking enough water. Adequate urination decreases the chance of developing bladder cancer. So I advise frequent drinking and to reduce meat consumption and compensate with vegetables. This holds true for all types of cancer and about vitamins. I am aware of several studies that support vitamin A or C preventing or lowering bladder cancer. However, I think it will be more beneficial to take multivitamin rather than a single form. Thank you so much, Dr. Sun. Yes, thank you. So today the doctor explained in details everything related to bladder cancer, such as its symptoms, causes, and how it can be managed. Thank you for joining us once again today at Cloud Hospital TV. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and respond to you as soon as possible.